Serious, serious work has been going on inside Alan the lifeboat. With the old steel exhaust off the engine and being rebuilt from scratch because it was slowly turning into dust, we've got an opportunity with the turbo. Whilst doing a fine job of pushing lots of air into the purpose-made book engine and allowing a potential 48 horses to emerge from the other end, up from 36 horsepower for the non-turbo engine, we noticed something some time ago. Our yard mechanic noticed a small puff of blue smoke when revving the engine hard, which means oil. Apparently this was no reason to panic just yet, but if an opportunity arose to check the seals, we should take it. And so, we shall. Turbos get rather warm, so there's a guard over the hot side, and it's not directly connected to the turbo, so it doesn't conduct heat and get alarmingly toasty. Beneath is some more lagging. I could take this off now, but it's so well done that I'm going to wait to see what diagnostics checks indicate and necessitate. The air filter quickly came off, and next, the largest of all the hoses, the air intake from the turbo to the engine block. These will all have been original to the build, but appear in good nick. The oil throughput has a supply at the top secured with a banjo bolt. Easy enough, but you need to look after these free banjo bolts as if your life depends on it. They aren't generic, and are at best expensive, and at worst, hard to get hold of. The washers are all spring washers, and I suspect I'll replace them with Norlocks, as some people consider spring washers on board boats to be the work of the devil. The oil drain is secured by a pair of bolts, and given how access to some of these fixtures is quite fiddly and restricted, I'd not wish on even my fledgling enemy having to do this sort of thing in a deep or awkward enclosed engine bay. That means the turbo is free of the hose and oil fittings. The exhaust pipe of course parted company from the turbo's flange days ago, all that's left is the large bolted junction with the engine's exhaust outlet. This it turns out is the same dimensions as the flanges where the air exits the exhaust pipe, so it's efficient for ordering gaskets, studs and other parts as they're all the same. This did take flipping forever though. These steel studs weren't as corroded at the tips as the ones at the exhaust pipe end, but I pre-squirted these with a little rust remover and release spray. The two near side ones weren't too bad, and because they had not used stainless steel at all in the initial assembly, there's been no galling or any other sort of sticking. But the other two were just brutes. Alan! Being objectionable and designed to maximise vexation aboard Alan, I had to go digging for obscure tools I've not used in many months. My normal spanners and socket set were not a help. Whatever angle I tried, there was a piece of metal in the way. Finally, I used a mini ratchet socket spanner, but couldn't move it far enough to turn, release, rotate, engage, turn, and repeat in lock mode. In ratchet mode, I could only just manage one click, so we're talking a fraction of a millimetre per rotation. In about 200 movements, finally the nut began its final journey off its stud, and it never loosened to finger spinnable, so I had to do this the whole way. Regardless, Spanner and I prevailed, and now the turbo is theoretically a free agent. I noticed before that the two captive studs in the exhaust outlet flange aren't actually straight, which is puzzling. I'm hoping the threads will take replacement studs in a straighter manner, as the holes in the custom laser cut flange matches the brand new gasket and not these wonky studs. Here's Alan's turbo. Pretty good condition for its age. It's not obvious what model it is, but the turbo refurb people will be able to tell me. I think I see a faint Mitsubishi logo though. That bolted on extension at the bottom there seems happy, and I think is a book part, not from the turbo maker, as the flange matches the engine's studs. The joint from the extension to the turbo is a totally different set of dimensions to this one and this one, so I'm not going to touch it. There's no evidence of issues with it. Here's a clearer view of the two oil pipes. The drain has two securing bolts, and the supply at the top uses the banjo bolt that we saw. But no fear one and all, I'm not done yet. Two things before leaving the engine for a week or two. I'm interested to see if I can save those four studs sticking out of the engine block. The threads look okay except for the ends. So I've oiled them, plus squirted on some more rust dissolver into a nut and plonked them on the dodgy bits of the studs. If over time this allows them to take nuts easily, great. If it doesn't, never mind, I'll replace them. And also, all those new open entrances to the engine need attention. What I'll do is I'll put little seals over the ends of all of these points of entry to the engine because I don't want any creepy crawlies, spiders or anything crawling inside the engine. So, because it'll be like this for a few weeks now, that's probably a good idea. I'm not convinced this will win any prizes for elegance, but some blue rag and masking tape will do swimmingly. 
Any non-compliant residue from the tape can be easily cleaned off later with isopropyl alcohol. My hope is that nothing and no one can now climb inside. This has been bugging me for months, and the turbo job reminded me to get it done. The pressure cap on the coolant expansion tank. It's corroded in and out, and looking a little sad after 15 years service. I don't want it to fall into pieces and shed parts into the coolant stream. Here's a new one. It's not an exact match, but fits and is set to 7 psi, which is within the correct range for this system. Do I need to paint it? Maybe not, but it's just chrome plated, and all the other engine accents are black, so we'll go with black. First a sanding to scuff the surface, then a good primer, and finally a coat of glossy black. A quick and easy job, but another one ticked off the still rather alarmingly long list. That's it for this episode, and I can hear the stampede of everyone rushing to get their own copies of my books, and Allen hats, stickers, and shirts. So that's good. You must join them. Bye.